Hi, my name is Justino Mora and I'm a leader of the California Dream Network and thank you for joining us again and I have uh, with me um, attorney Jessica Dominguez. Today we're going to be answering questions about forms I-765 and also I-765 WS and this is uh, to, for the process of applying for deferred action um, and my first question is um, you know, many people uh, are using made up uh, social security numbers and um, you know, they also have IT numbers. So what should they do? Should they include those numbers in question number nine? I would recommend that if you don't have a social security number that you leave that space blank. Okay, and so, okay, thank you. That was very clear. <laughs> so for question number 10, um, it a it's asking for um, an alien registration number. Um, so uh, what should they do in here for those that came with a visa? Well, an alien registration number, it's only given to that person that has had an encounter with immigration in the past, either by having an order uh, in front of a judge or because they applied for an immigration benefit. Mm -hmm. If you don't have an alien number, then you leave that space blank. As you said, if someone came in with a visa and they have a 994, which is yes. a little uh, uh -huh. white little card that has uh, the information about the last entry, then you can include that I-94 there. But there are also a lot of dreamers that came in with a visa, but they didn't get an I-94 and they don't have that information, so they don't have to worry about it. They can leave that space blank as well. Sounds great. Um, my next question is um, uh, for qu question number 12. Um, it's asking for the date of uh, last entry into the U.S. So many people are confused because they think that um, they need to put the date when they came in into the U.S. So um, can you clarify um, that question? The specific question is Citizenship and Immigration Services wants the applicant to give the exact date when they came into the country last. That's the question that's been yes. part of this form. Mm -hmm. Now, if there is an issue with the last entry, because for example, it is within the past five years, between yeah. June 15th of 2007 to June 15th of 2012, then the entire evidence should be analyzed before someone completes this form mm -hmm. so that it can be analyzed it's in, enti in its entirety according to the last entry. Sounds great. And um, the last question, is um, um, on this application is question 16. It's asking for a specific code. So what should people put on these two, uh, three parentheses? Thank you, Citizenship and Immigration Services, because if any of us had any questions, we can go to form I-765WS. It tells us specifically that if you're applying for employment authorization under the C-14 diffraction or C-33 consideration of diffraction for childhood arrivals. Mm -hmm. So we should use C-33 because that's the specific code that they have assigned to consideration of diffraction for childhood arrivals. C-33. Thank you. Um, okay. And then we're going to go um, next uh, to the next application, which is um, Form I-765 uh, WS. Okay. Um, and it looks pretty simple, um, and, but a lot of people have a lot of questions. <laughs> this is where we have been getting um, a lot of the questions. Um, for instance, on the financial information section, uh, people are married um, and they, you know, their, their spouses, you know, they, they work. Um, so they're wondering if they should include that as part of their as part of their income. Good question. The part two, question two, specifically asks, it says my current annual income is. That's the information that should be included there. What the applicant's income is. Now, if they're concerned because the income taxes show a lot more than yes. what they're going to mm -hmm. be writing down here, all they have to do is give it as an explanation. My husband and I file taxes jointly, but I am only earn, earning a certain amount and this my, uh, these are my expenses. And what about for those students that are under 18, that are living with their parents, um, is, is their parents' income um, considered the student's income? No. If the students mm -hmm. don't have an income, they don't have to list an amount here. That does not preclude them from being able to establish that they do have an economic necessity for employment. For example, as long as they give the explanation of, I'm currently going to high school, however, I look forward to being able to attend college in the near future, I need my work permit so that I can cover my tuition. As long as they uh -huh. give an explanation there. Now, talking about school, many of my friends and a lot of people that, that I know, they're getting a lot of scholarships. Um, and I'm wondering, though, does that count as part of their income? It depends. Is it a scholarship to be given to the student for his daily expenses, or is it a scholarship given to the student so that it could be given directly to the school, yeah. for example, as a tuition payment? If it does not become income, then it doesn't, doesn't need to be reflected as income. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much for answering all of my questions. That was very helpful. It You're welcome. It clarified a lot of my doubts and questions. Um, and um, thank you all for watching this video. 
Um, we hope you find this helpful. And if you have any uh, further questions about the deferred action application, remember there's a lot of organizations um, that are you know, trusted uh, sources of information, such as Cherla, the California Dream Network, um, United Dream. You can find those organizations on the web as well. Um, on their websites, they have Facebook pages, Twitter accounts, remember. Um, that's another way to get more information on deferred action. So I encourage you to visit their uh, pages um, and ask as many questions as you can. And once again, thank you again.